I know we'll go deeper on uh, hacking. Next week. Yeah. yeah. All right. David did a little uh, meet up last night. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. She had have been there. All right. I think we're ready to go. Go three, two, and one. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I am Jonathan Taylor, and this is Sean McCool. And Sean, we got a guest today, man. We do. They're not here yet, so we're going to get a head start, pour some beers. Yeah. We're going to be talking about how to double your sales. Like, who doesn't want that? Double. How about that's a triple? pretty? That's a pretty big promise. I'd like to quadruple, but I'll stick. I'll go with double. But we could just about, do two doubles in a row. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Uh, there, no, we've. Yeah, I mean, this is. Uh, I've had our guest on another podcast. I, I mentioned uh, on our la one of our last episodes. He joined me for one of my industry shows, and uh, really good. He's got some killer takeaways. Um, obviously, he's a big. He's a copywriter, so his big thing is in going back to old school marketing, direct response. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, handwritten letters. We kind of referenced a little bit of that from um, uh, Outrageous uh, Advertising, the book we were discussing last time. But he's got his own way of presenting his uh, his personal, personalized letters. So I'm excited to have him on. He's uh, His name is Kevin Donlin. He's uh, written about five or six books. Uh, one is a book called Marketing Multipliers right here. I first came Very across cool. this book. Um, it's a mini book. And one of the um, one of the guys that we've had on uh, before on our show, David Seed, who's talked about his mini books, he sent me like a whole bunch of them. He sent me like a, a whole you know, library of many books that he's done with a lot of his clients. And one of them happened to be Kevin's book. It's been sitting around forever until I picked it up one day and went through it. And I was like, wow, it's pretty good stuff. So speaking of good stuff, Kevin is in the house. Kevin's in the house. He's in the green room. So uh, we'll have to, uh, I guess we'll, why don't we, since he's going to be tight on time, why yep. don't we do the beer afterwards? Unless he's got a beverage then we'll, we can ask, but okay. We can always uh let's ask him. Yeah. He doesn't have a, does he have a beverage? Does he he does he's got water. <laughs> is that like is that a water? Okay. H2O tell. does not count, Kevin. <laughs> we'll have to uh let's go ahead you know, and bring he's in. A, he's he's in he's a fitness guy. So he I mean he's he does a lot of cool stuff. He'll he'll share and I, he does a lot of the uh competitions. He's he's a baseball, he's a uh, still plays baseball and i mean yeah it, over 50 club i yeah, saw that yeah well you know my garmin watch has a as a an app on it that counts beers like how many beers yeah. you've burned <laughs> so beers must be some form of athletic pursuit because it's on my garmin watch <laughs> so that's all i can absolutely <laughs> he, he put a hat on did he put a hat on to join the crowd the hat crowd <laughs> like that uh right. so no yeah we can do we can we can review although i'm not gonna wait i'm gonna be sipping my yeah my we'll brew. sip now we'll go ahead and sip and then, and then we'll uh, give our rating afterward mine is not pouring well so uh -oh. check this out oh wow <laughs> it's like a float wow like you know i i learned a little trick this week that you should <laughs> uh from a uh, a famous bartender who said people that pour, pour their beer slowly to to reduce the head on the beer yeah. actually create more gas bubbles when you drink it inside your stomach you realize ah, that interesting so you're actually supposed to just turn that bad boy upside down and well that's like, kind of what i did and it exploded on me so maybe it's well, just, it wasn't quite see cool all enough. that foam is in your glass it won't be all that gas will be in your uh, glass but not in your all uh, right let's bring <laughs> kevin on <laughs> all right uh, kevin welcome to the show <laughs> That's some highbrow stuff, fellas. Gas in your glass. <laughs> There's a lot of gas and hot air that goes on in this show, man. That's for sure. <laughs> Thanks for so having me, to guys. Our, to our audience, we were giving you a little bio before the show, Kevin. Kevin Donlin is joining us. He's been called an accidental 
pioneer of online marketing. He sold his first, uh, he sold one of his first eBooks, Sean, back in 1994. Wow. Uh, 1994. I mean, that was <laughs> early adopter right there to, uh, that e is early. Like <laughs> I think the first thing I did online was probably 97. Really? I don't think, yeah. I, I mean, other than maybe some stuff we did in the military, but for the most part, yeah. 97, right. I remember the, this thing going around about like you could this stupid little ad and you, you <laughs> copied it and you pasted it. It was, it was like a chain letter for, for the internet. But yeah. That's wow. That's impressive. I mean, yeah, I can't, I don't think I was on the internet in 94, honestly. No. Um, but since then, I mean, early adopter here, Kevin's been a uh, copywriter and advisor for clients worldwide, uh, repeatedly delivering sales gains of more than 1 million in uh with print ads sales letters and online marketing so oh, love that love we that. are going to be talking and i did hold up your uh your mini book oh, uh, cool. earlier kevin marketing multipliers um Thank you so much. which is hey. just a gem of a book um I don't, are, are you still minute. are you, you, can can you still send these out flight. yeah I, they're uh, you can get it on amazon sure I, I've, okay. I've got them here but it's, it's designed to uh to read on a flight of about 45 minutes it's one of those 500 milers where you get to the top and descend yeah. that's the kind of flight uh, that yeah. it's ideal it's for. like yep are you flying to atlanta from here uh, exactly from here. wherever people go uh, so yeah <laughs> that, the the ebook thing real quick that's a glorified title I, I it was a text file i would email people in 1994 mm. there's yeah. no ebook software and uh, there's no way to process credit cards so people would mail me a check and, that's uh, awesome. You were requested to write your email address on the memo line, and then I would distribute every every twice a week. I'd go to the post office and collect the checks. <laughs> it was fantastic fun. Beer money. Uh, yeah. Beer, money. Yeah. Beer money. So awesome. I know that I know what this because you told me on the last on the show the other show that you joined me on. But what was the uh, what was the the topic of your ebook? The title. I wanted to go for something evergreen. You know, I thought about you know how to shoot ninety or. It was called How to Find a Job on the Internet. Mm -hmm. And I did the research for people, found out the, the resources and put it in a text file. I think it was 10 bucks. Um, yeah. Didn't have any kind of a strategy for what to do after. So I was dumb 101. Um, I created all these customers and had nothing else to sell them. I was just like, cool. Wow. Funny. So, I mean, I knew a guy who was smart. He was selling a basketball videotape, a VHS and it was him wow. in his driveway doing stuff. He's even shorter than I am, but he sold it for like 99 bucks. And then he would get you with all these follow-up courses and stuff. He made money. Yeah. Wow. Seven, not seven figures, but a, a good chunk of change. He was a disciple of Gary Halbert, actually. Oh, really? Um, wow. Uh, awesome. I, I really can't say his name. He's a former client of mine. But yeah. so there, were, I guess, uh, you know, if we want to be um, strategic, the whole purpose of marketing is to create a customer. Yeah. And once you've got that customer, you have to know what to do. The second and third sale, et cetera. I didn't, I wasn't that evolved in 1994, but right. it was a lot of fun. Sorry for the detour. I couldn't resist. No, no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. I want to mention too, like we were talking um, a little about your, uh, before we get into the topic, a little bit about your background. Uh, I mentioned, we, we both mentioned you, you're a baseball player. Um, yeah, we just won the state championship last Sunday. Oh, wow. Awesome. Congratulations. Plus. Thank yeah. you. Our 10th Fantastic. in 13 years. We don't suck. <laughs> hey, you're, well, so you play shortstop, right? No. Uh, oh, okay. Center field, left field, center corner field. outfield, yeah. outfield. We, okay. we shuttle around, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. So anything, uh, you know, I love my job, but, you know, hang with your friends. Being yeah, on yeah a, absolutely. In a dugout, you're 12 years old again, and the level of humor is right there at age sixth grade. It's <laughs> it has not age. has not matured it's, at all. No, it's, <laughs> well, it's a time machine. I mean, it's yeah. it's just the best. Sorry, that's fantastic. I, I, I kind of um, no, that's so cool because I, I you know I don't I didn't even know that existed. I mean, I, I know, know I've been involved in like in in the past. You know, there's softball groups and and stuff like that, but. That's really cool. That you, no, I mean, you can still be playing baseball. What's out there is, I look at my dad when he was, I'm 57, and my dad at 57, I don't think he could see or touch his toes, and mm -hmm. you know, God love him. I mean, but so that we have, there's so much out there that you could be doing, and um, absolutely, it's, yeah. uh, it's, there's such a world outside of work, and you know, well, this is fun. I mean, hang with you guys. This yeah. is where, um, 
you know, the, the real fun is, is the connection with people. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's what you get sitting on a, a dugout bench with, uh, 14 other guys for yeah, three yeah, hours. Right. Anyway. Yeah. So, so did, I hear you, did I hear you say you, that team has been together for 10 years? No, we've been together since 2005. So going wow, up, even most, longer. I started when it was a 35 and up team. And then we all, you know, Never we got ex <laughs> pro players in this league who can still hump the ball up there. And wow. after about age 45, you really can't hit a 35 year old pitcher. <laughs> and so we uh, moved up to a 50 plus league and we've been, yeah. um, we've been doing pretty well. But uh, that's pretty I wrote amazing. My newsletter. Yeah, the thing is, is that we're such good friends. We're so strong mm -hmm. together. Right. Um, it's really, you know, at Texas A&M, they have the concept of the 12th man, I think. The, oh, the, yeah. Uh, right? Yep. yep. So it's, we got the 10th man. It's the bench. <laughs> That's and, great. So when we go into a game, it's really 10 versus 9. Yep. The other team doesn't know it, but uh, that's that's one of our secrets. And that's none of you cool. guys have retired to golf. That's amazing. Yeah, that's I the mean, other thing. Golf is a four-letter <laughs> word. I mean, there's so much more. I could just, you know, go out in the garage and swear for 20 minutes and hit my head against the wall. And I have the same <laughs> feeling coming back into the house. Oh, yeah. I paid 100 bucks, four mm -hmm. hours. You know, that's yeah. just me. I love, I, you know, I'll play golf, but... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, baseball players transition. I, most baseball players that I've ever known transition into golf really well i play golf with a um with a client of mine who is a college he was a former co collegiate baseball player okay and he's i mean his swing is just so smooth every time on off a the lot team. of similarities yeah, yeah absolutely My, timing and and the ball's not moving right exactly <laughs> <laughs> that helps <laughs> you look less stupid swing i mean you exactly. still look dumb if you i i sent a whole bunch of divots and and chunks of earth flying <laughs> when I golf and I yeah. have a throwing wedge. That's a real important club. <laughs> how far? I, yeah, that's right. How, how far you can get it across <laughs> or into the pond. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so give us a little background on, uh, on Kevin before we jump in, you know, I, we mentioned about your early days in the internet. So what have you been doing, uh, since and, and tell us a little bit about, um, the beginning of, uh, cl the client cloning system. Well, you know, this whole concept of persuasion, I think we all agree that's that's what got me into this business is it's kind of alchemy. If you write the right collect combination of words on paper or on screen, people will be persuaded. And um, I'm only selling things or pushing services of my own or my clients products, you know, that that are beneficial to people. So you're really doing a lot of good if you can just get the the right combination of words. So that's always that's endlessly fascinating to me. I plan to never retire. Um, and I've been in it since 1994 in one fashion or another. Um, back then, I actually started online and was primarily mostly online. I was a webmaster for FedEx.com. So it was one of like 12 websites in 1995 when I came on. And um, we had six web pages on the whole site. If you could envision FedEx.com with six web pages. <laughs> and uh, wow. the whole function of the website was to track the package, and that was it, and a few other things. But we would get I'm going about, back to the Wayback Machine. I'm going to check that out. I'm going yeah, to go to archive.org. <laughs> I think that's where it is. Go back. Yeah. I actually stuck some code in there saying, you know, Kevin Donlin is this, that. I don't remember on the homepage. I would sneak yeah. stuff in and yeah. it was harmless. It was a, um, so I could, I can program a web page in a text pad yeah. uh, application. I can do that. It's because I learned we, there was no web page editor in 1995. <clears throat> 1996 and so i started with uh you know the the pioneers of online marketing i really had nothing bad to unlearn i was very fortunate and we went uh i, I did that for two years for fedex i was a a contractor for them and then uh went on on my own primarily doing web pages and emails for about um 10 plus years then i got really heavy into direct mail about 2012 11 or so so 10 11 years ago and uh, since for the past 10, 11 years, it's been a combination of online and offline because you're, you know, your, your clients, um, they uh, spend a lot of time online, but they live offline if you think yeah. about it. Right. So anything I can do to get something, there you go. That's it. Bingo. <laughs> there it is. And if you count up the, the I mean, it, there may be six, there may be five web pages. And so I used to fight tooth and nails. So this is funny. If you look at that background, it's black. 
Right. And it's re it's called reverse font, right? It's pro yeah. and I would tell them until I was blue in the face. This is provably harder to read people. Oh yeah. You know, this is coming back though. This same color scheme. Oh, so stupid. No. A lot because of the tech companies are coming back and, and same thing. And it's said, like small font and and reverse type and is it's hard to read. Pages. I still remember one. Two, yeah. Three. Yeah. So anyway, um, six links there. Yeah. The uh, the design company would the designers would say, but it's dramatic. I would say, well, yeah. I mean, a hammer to the head is dramatic. Do you want to see that? <laughs> why? 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 And they wanted to justify their designiness, you know. And so, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So an important principle here is that look, the design has to serve the the, the function. What do you want to do with this website or this letter? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so eventually <laughs> it took about maybe a year. See, Kevin, here's a here's a brand, a new yeah. hot okay. company. Okay. You know, same thing. Don't do it. Yeah. Type. So the other thing is that movable, you know, what is that? The the types moving in and out? Yeah. What am I doing with what is that? That's like a spinning flaming logo from nineteen ninety eight. It's no yeah. it's no yeah. worse, it's no better. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, I get it. I have the same complaint I have to tell, especially if your clients are, are forty five plus mm -hmm. <laughs> because they they can't read this stuff. No. Mm -hmm. I remember Clayton make pieces saying that when I first got in the business. Oh, one of the playing. first and uh he was like yeah reverse type and you know your font needs to be at least 16 and i'm like what is he talking about and then you know like five <laughs> years later i lost my reading eyesight you know yeah. where, where i got to use readers and i'm like oh that's it well this, this is what he's talking about david ogilvy in the 40s i mean yeah. i'm not this is not a recent development he's saying no. in the 40s all capital letters which they use in the military for some god awful reason when they're doing reports and stuff yep. um provably harder to read all capital letters versus standard caps yeah. reverse fonts you know which is a black a white text on a black background provably provably harder to read than standard mm -hmm. etc cetera, etc cetera. so these are just little things that you just check off in your head uh, but people will miss that I think the exception to reverse font, we'll geek out here for a second, are highway signs. Sure. I mean, those are the exception, but yeah. they're so big. The font yeah. size is so large. Yeah. Because right. highway all That's highway right. signs are reverse font. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost all, except caution signs, I guess. But everything else is white on a darker background. Yeah, and that's yep. as it should. So again, it's like a newspaper. Newspapers have evolved over X hundred years to be easy to read. And so just look at a newspaper when in doubt. Yep. If people still can find a newspaper. You uh, say today at the hotel, that's about all you'll find. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So one of the, uh, the, the things that I like is the advice of Warren Buffett, which is rule one, don't lose money. You know, rule one in marketing is don't lose the sale. There's mm -hmm. so many ways to screw things up and lose the sale before your brilliant persuasion has a chance to even work. So don't do that. Yeah. It's a great point. So, um, how did you find out about copywriting as a career? You said you found out 94. It was about, yeah, I got at some, I responded to something and got a, a newsletter sales letter from Jay Abraham. Okay. He's kind of my spiritual godfather. And so I was just blown away by Jay Abraham's sales letter. I still have it in my closet somewhere. I've got a nice swipe file and, uh, I thought, yeah. It, it's like when John Lennon saw an Elvis movie, he he said, "This is a good job." He's pointing at the the screen. I could I could get into that as a career being Elvis. And so when I was reading this thing from Jay Abraham, I was like, "This is a good job." I mean, <laughs> yeah, because I had written you know nonfiction, okay. and geez, Louise, that's impossible to make a living on. And you know, you can do it, but sure. so it's like writing to make a living, but it's way easier than hoping someone's going to publish your great American novel. Right. Yeah. And it's a whole lot easier. I, I stumbled into copywriting as a on the road salesman. So mm. I was doing in-home sales all over Texas. Cool. Got a letter from AWAI. Okay. Yeah. You know, said, Hey, if you can write a letter like this one, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Brilliant letter. I was, I, like, oh. that program. I was like, Oh, that looks easy. I'll just do that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and plus you've got a background in sales. So I mean, right. you know, what it is copywriting? Help. It's words that sell yeah. on paper or on screen. Right. So if you can sell in person, that's actually yeah. harder. Yeah, they definitely gave me a, a huge, I think, heads up and allowed me to accelerate <clears throat> my career pretty quickly yeah. having that. Um, there's still some things I wonder about, like in it's hard to transfer to copywriting that I used to do in sales, like Rapport building is a good example. 
It's mm-hmm. much harder to build rapport in a letter than it is face to face at a kitchen table. And I've always wondered, like, how do you really? I know you can do some, you know, you use jargon from the industry and mm-hmm. there's different ways to do it. But it's, I just wonder, I always, in the back of my mind, it's always like, huh, I wonder if there's other ways to do That's that. That's tough. It's, it's not tough. I mean, I, it's funny you should ask. I just finished <laughs> a draft of a letter to a client this morning. It's four pages. Mm-hmm. And all of page one is rapport building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's about uh, inflation and um, prices are going up on in this category of products. Yeah. And uh, the government's going to restrict your choices. It's it's basically getting people to just not, you, you know, you're off to a good start with a sales letter if people are nodding their head when they're reading yeah. it, at least. Yeah. So it's rapport building. So, right, right. you know, when we got started here, it was great. You guys did a great job of building rapport. We're, you know, just going back and forth. And here we are. And it's yeah. we're off and rolling. So that first 25% of my letter selling a very expensive item was mm. just to get people to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Get them nodding their head. Right. Yeah. Rapport building. So that's an it's an overlooked thing. You can't just jump in and say, new now, buy this thing. I mean, you can, but right. Yeah. It's, e-com, uh, e-com tries to do that still quite a bit. Yeah. Um, sure. I, I work with a an agency that does a lot of e-com stuff. And you know, it, it, <laughs> but you, again, you have to know your market. You have to know if it's cold traffic or some sure. warm mm-hmm. awareness scale, the whole bit. Like if they're on Amazon.com, they're there to buy something. So you don't have right. to do the, the big warm up. Exactly. But mine's going to be a letter that's landing in your lap. And so I've got a, you weren't thinking of buying this yeah. item for uh, five, 10 grand before my letter arrived. So yeah. I've got to w- warm you up. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. So a five or 10 grand sale um, off a four page letter, or is there a two step process? Yeah, it's, it... it's really just selling the consultation. Okay. Yeah, I'm not asking for the money. So, so selling... that's, that's impressive. You can get 10 grand in four pages. I mean, that's. Oh, I can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have done it. Reminds and, me of the uh... Admiral Bird letter. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> but, you know, if you want to skip ahead, the whole secret to any, in, in my experience, it's the list. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So Gary Halbert has said it in order, it's list, um, offer, <laughs> and then the, the creative, the, mm-hmm. the brand copy. So I have a very good list. My my client has 70,000 names in their database. Boom. Yeah. Those people are getting this letter. The offer is tremendous. It's, it's a tremendous offer. And then the copies, you know, by then it's, it's kind of writes itself. Yeah. That is true. So, and, I hate to admit that to clients sometimes, but you know, it's I like, like to, then I'm under less pressure to be <laughs> It's like the list. I'll yeah. still make you money, but it's not going to be the most exciting thing you've ever read. And or maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. So Sean and I were, I think on a recent, I think it was la- one of our last episodes that we did. We were taught, we got into talking about, I'm sure you have the book outrageous advertising with uh, Bill Glazer. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I bet that's on your, uh, uh where are they? Yeah, he's going to pull that in my right up. List. Yeah, so I, I was looking at that. So yeah. I love Bill Glazier. Uh, yeah. It's with my Kennedy stuff back there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we were talking about your, because w- what got me thinking about that book was just our conversation on the, you know, your handwritten sales letter, which was so good. So I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, s- some of the things that you talk about and obviously your, you know, strategies and the client cloning and, um, you know, we talked, we've talked about the, uh, you know, the, the printed email, which to me was just awesome. Cause I, I'm doing that like now, I mean, now it's like, that's a no brainer, um, mm-hmm. you know, print out your emails and send those physically, by the way, I got your, e- uh, your uh, newsletter too. I love that too. Awesome. So we'll talk about that as well. Cool. Um, you know, one sheet newsletter still, it's, a I love it. it's yeah, it's not the it's fact that you're different. getting something in the mail physically is still, you know, with value. So it's exactly it's a little yeah, bit so different. Bill Glazer, um, Bill Glazer is a really good example of, um, I mean, he's in an industry that is so, he was, uh, men, yeah. you know, menswear, yep. which they compete entirely on price 99% mm-hmm. of the time. So it's a commodity. It's a suit. Yeah. It's a tie. And men don't like to buy clothes by and large. So. <laughs> But most men, yeah, most men. Um, me being one of them, I, right. I'd rather you know drink paint and go buy a suit. <laughs> the uh, the thing about Bill is, but he was really, really good before he found Dan Kennedy, and then um, Dan kind of you know iron sharpened stone or what have you. Bill just uh, right. 
right. uh, was always, already good. So that's an outstanding book for people to get a hold of. But one of his yeah. things, and he didn't invent it. It's a handwritten sales letter. You write it on a, a legal pad. Mm -hmm. And then you make copies and it should look like, you know, a, a letter that comes that's written on legal paper. That was actually, it was either Ron Paul or Ron Paul's dad or somebody back in the 70s. It was a political fundraising letter that was, I think, one of the first examples of a handwritten. Dan Kennedy told me this. Interesting. Um, wow. Yeah, Dan Kennedy said, you know, that's been, that's from the 70s. That was. Wow. That's cool. Was, uh, so it wasn't Bill Glazier, but Bill Glazier, you know, made it available to the rest of us mortals. Sure. Yeah. And so um, if you get the book or just Google handwritten sales letter, um, Bill Glazer, I think his is eight pages, mm -hmm. whether that's eight sheets of paper, I can't recall, but it's, it's, it's a sale. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and he's sending it. Here's the thing about Bill. You got to remember it's his list. He's always sending this to people in his database. He's not sending sure. it willy nilly or he wasn't right. when he was active. Right. Um, he would go out to different lists, I suppose, but um, so these are past customers or people who've been in the store. He's very smart. Most retailers don't capture your contact information. Most businesses don't capture your contact information. Right. And so he would uh, get the mailing address of people who came to his store and he sent them this handwritten letter. And I'm working from memory here with something like, you know, please forgive the handwritten note, but I had a really rash idea and wanted to just jot this down before I forgot. Right. And so there's a lot to that. Um, sure. But I hijacked that and used it with one of my clients who sold home remodeling. Mm -hmm. And he is a good artiste, you know, so he actually wrote it himself. It looked really good. And it was a Thanksgiving sale. So he wrote a little turkey and um, <laughs> we wrote, you know, there are coupons. I think it was a four page letter that sold a home visit. And, you know, the coupons are in dotted outline on the last page. And so we had a really good list. It was people who were prospects who hadn't yet purchased or maybe it's yeah. been x number of years but we also had a very good offer um and i saw i pushed him i'll always push clients to the point where they go okay no stop it no you know up to like you know keg of beer you know lap dance no no no, no. and so i pushed him and then we right. we dialed it back a bit so we had a really good offer to just meet with his guy at yeah. your house and we mailed it out and made a ton of money um oh, and, and the thing so here's why it works it, a it's different from any letter you're going to see this year mm -hmm. maybe ever it's like what it's like a car accident you, you're driving yeah what yeah. is that and so you but you're compelled to look yeah pattern other, interruption i mean it's like every, we're seeing the same things over and over every day and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you get a letter like this it's like whoa and something else that i just learned this year i believe it was rory R rory gosh darn it an ad guy from the UK. He worked for uh, huh? Ogilvy, I believe, Rory something or other. But he was writing in his book about a high signaling cost or high cost signal, something along the lines of, look, when you get a handwritten letter, this wasn't done in five minutes. Yeah. Like typewritten letter, this took time. So yeah. there's a high cost involved. Someone sure. took a lot of time to send you this message. Right. Um, and it's the same principle behind why the, the female um, peacock well, you know, if she's got like three guys lined up in front of her, she's checking out their plumage. She goes for the guy with the the biggest plumage because sure. it cost him a lot physically to produce those feathers. Right. So he went to a lot of effort to gussy himself up to be attractive. Right. And so she picks him for a mate. It's the same principle along the lines of if you get this letter that someone took a lot of time to write it and send it to you, yeah. you're going to go, huh. And you're going to pay attention to that. So uh, mm -hmm. signaling cost, it's something I'm blanking. It's it's the afternoon and I have had no coffee for like six hours. <laughs> signaling cost. Um, yeah. It's a cool principle, it uh, apart from the fact that it's a pattern interrupt. So yeah. a lot of people will be, you know, aghast at this. This is against our branding principle. <laughs> this won't work in my industry. Like, we, right. you know, it's like, whatever. Okay. So the answer to this and any kooky ideas that we come up with in, in the next few minutes is you just test it on a small subsegment of your of your, right. of your list right. um, and just to you know contain the damage if people visit your office with torches and pitchforks okay you know we won't do this again but um, you know test it you, you don't yeah. know until you've tried it sure and um, so yeah that's the, the, that's the, that's an idea I got from Bill and I ported it to my own use but yeah the handwritten sales letter is a good one that's a very good outrageous idea proven I, I did this um, for a friend of mine when i first started in copywriting he owned a like a water treatment company like where you go in you put the filtration system in people's homes and things like that 
then there was a neighborhood outside of Knoxville that was having all these pin leak problems. It's like little holes that develop in your copper pipes. Huh. Just it's bizarre. Something in the water. So anyway, he wanted me to write a letter because, you know, he wanted to get in there and help people and all this stuff. So we ended up coming up with a look like a, a residential homemade like community newsletter. So this mm-hmm. was like 2008 or so. So I took like just straight out of like pages or word, you know, one of their template type uh-huh. newsletters. So it looked kind of cheesy. We used lots of like word clip art back in the day, you know, with a little paper clip guy talking <laughs> to you, like, like put some <laughs> just cheesy. It looked like somebody made it, you know, for at home. And mm-hmm. we had an interview with him and his company talking about how they could help with these pen leaks and the problems. And we yeah. just made it look like a community newsletter and that thing. I think he ended up with over a hundred appointments. Wow. Sold some 60 or 70 of them. Like it wow. was one of the best campaigns he's ever done to date. And it was just for the same reason. It looked just like it looked a little personal. Mm-hmm. It didn't look like business. You know, mm-hmm. it looked like somebody in the community had pushed this in their mailbox. Right. So the resistance was way down. Mm-hmm. And by the time you figured it out, you were already sold on the story. That's so. a that's a principle by one of my heroes, Gary Bensavenga and the, his print. It, that's why Magalogs were 16 yes. and 32 page Magalogs. Yep. His, his wording is make your advertising itself valuable, uh, mm-hmm. have the appearance of value. And that's what you did. Yeah. It's like, well, it's, this is information. It's, this is a news. And so you made it look valuable. It didn't look like a sales letter. That's why it worked. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. cool. I love that. I, I just learned that a couple of years ago from Gary, make your advertising itself valuable. So um, anything that you deliver in a FedEx envelope, for example, that looks valuable. Mm-hmm. So that's one of my tricks is um, to send it FedEx. Let's talk about some of your, um, I think Jonathan mentioned you use some space, some space ads as well. Oh, he disappeared. Where'd he go? Oh, did you press a button? I did. Sorry there about go. That. Okay. I get, uh, did I say something wrong? You re- you removed yourself, I guess. <laughs> oh, my, my wayward mouth. Sean here. kicked you out for yeah. a second there. <laughs> so you've done some work in space ads. I'm fascinated with space ads. I still love space ads. So do I. I've done some for trade journals and things like that. Where are you finding the need for space ads, and kind of what are you, what are you seeing around that market? Like where it's a they? dwindling market, unfortunately, for print. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's going to be you can maybe use it as an insert. In a, in a newspaper or an insert in someone else's um, mailings. For right. me, it's been dwindling, unfortunately. I'm thinking I did I d- did one last year for a dentist that went in a, a trade magazine for dentists. I did one in a local newspaper in suburban um, Philadelphia a year ago. It's been actually a good maybe six, nine months since I did a print ad, but I love yeah. The nice thing about a print ad is like a haiku or a sonnet. It's a format that you just are bound by. Yeah. So you've got a page and that's it. And what are you going to do with this page? You know, so a sonnet is whatever, 12 lines, same thing. So it's very, um, uh, I just like the, the, it's a forcing function. You've got to put it all here. And there are certain elements that are always going to be there. The coupon mm-hmm. uh, should be a couple of pieces of art. And uh, I just love working in that format, but it's uh, dwindling. Yeah, I like how tight it is where you you, you can't really ramble. Like you've got to get to no, the point yeah. pretty quick and, mm-hmm. you know, strong headline, good image. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a lot like a Facebook ad in some ways. Yeah, there's they're the same principles. I don't do a lot at all in Facebook. Um, if my clients are running Facebook stuff, I'll chime in and give them stuff, but I don't monkey with it myself. Yeah. So I'm curious what... You say it's dwindling, and I know publications. I mean, obviously, newspapers are are dying. Uh, but you know, trade journals. You know, I, I don't know. I I think well, they're that, still going strong. Yeah, I'm thinking about general print advertising. Okay. Yeah, newspapers, gotcha. but trade journals. I absolutely agree. They're still there. You just got to hunt for them. But every industry's got two or three. Mm-hmm. And the good news is that everyone thinks, oh, nobody advertises in print anymore. It's all Facebook. <laughs> Fine, thank you. Get out. It's oh, perfect. Of, yeah. of the publication. <laughs> Less yeah. the same thing with direct mail. Nobody says. I mean, they're, I love it. Someone actually, they're say. they're 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 basically overpriced, wasted space for most most companies that advertise in them. Because I I get a lot of trade journals sent to my home 
uh, with the industries that I serve. And, you know, to me, they're, you know, I always just like to, to just flip through, you know, whenever I get a quarterly trade journal in the industry and just look at how, just how bad uh, right. their advertising is. And just like full page, half page. I mean, you name it. It's it's just, you know, it's it's wasted opportunity and wasted money down the drain. And more often than you would care to, uh, more often than not, some of those ads are done by agencies. Yeah. You know, ad agencies who know how to sell. I love using the quote mark. <laughs> you know, a copywriter who works at an ad agency. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, who's probably like 20 something years old. <laughs> well, they're always the funniest people at any party. You can spot yeah. the copywriter from an ad agency. He has a sure. gaggle of yeah. people on him and they're going, ah. yeah, yeah. and they all want, secretly want to be joke writers for SNL <laughs> to a man or a woman. Right. And I'll ask him, you know, Hey, how many John Capel's books have you got? Or absolutely zero. Who is uh Claude Hopkins? Yeah. So yeah. I just, who's that? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go back to your thing. You can't sell for, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So it's, it's fun to know that you have such a huge advantage right? Yeah, over exactly. most yeah. advertisers, whether it's an in-house ad or an agency ad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, uh, the trade journals, you know, the more nichified the journal is, the more people pay attention to those things they're reading. Sure. If you think about it, if you're in a, like my, I'm in a running club here in, in, in Minneapolis and our Facebook page is just so high traffic. People mm -hmm. go into our group and read every day because it's just a couple hundred of us. Yeah. And so it's the same principle with a trade journal. If it's, a, you know, the narrower the industry, the narrower the niche, the more readership you've got of that thing. And so they're reading yeah. every page. Oh, sure. Yeah. And if your ad looks like it's got useful information, they're going to read it just like a, mm -hmm. a story, an article. So it's a huge advantage if you understand that. Yep. No doubt. And, and they do terrible job. You know, I, <laughs> there's one in particular that I get and it is, it's one in the coatings, like one of the markets that I serve in the coatings industry that I get. And I just got one last week. Uh, I flipped through it and it's just nothing but, um, images and pictures and, you know, you know, just nothing not you know no direct response no you know no direct response principle principles sure. no copywriting no good headlines nothing mm -hmm. i mean it's just like images and here's what we do and you know here's how long we've been in business like it's just like looking at a real estate agent's ad on a bus stop seat <laughs> yeah. or, or the local all state agent with their That's name right. you, you right. them, except, yep. you know, they go by on a bus the side of a bus it's a picture exactly you know, what that <laughs> yeah it's the same principle only in print which makes it more inexcusable yep no doubt don't get me well don't get us started we could all ramble and rage <laughs> and we're like angry old men get off get that crap ad off my lawn exactly yeah so talk I, about like i want you to mention like some of the things that you talk about with the you know obviously your client cloning systems i you know a lot of it's personalized direct mail um you know you can talk about the uh, the, the printed email which you know I, I just mentioned earlier if you would sure. you know talk about those but the whole premise is you're taking a personalized approach you know something that you know we're so used to in this day and age everybody's email everybody's texting everybody's um you know social media and the fact that you're getting something more personalized in the mail that's tangible that you can touch feel and see mm -hmm. is a little bit different and that's mm -hmm. what people want i think you know sean and i talk about this all the time on the show i think people are gravitate yeah they're kind of moving back to like wanting to go to the mailbox and literally pull something out of the box sure you know, to yeah, touch nobody, and feel nobody so, hates to see their name on an envelope right um especially if they can rule out the fact that this is a utility bill or right. a <laughs> fundraising letter from yeah. whatever political party it sure. is. Stepping back a bit, my, my idea behind client cloning systems is that you can struggle to sell to strangers mm -hmm. or you could do a little bit more to make each client, you know, double in value. And if you double yep. things quickly, you get a geometric progression and you get a huge bump in sales. And so I'm all, all about, working your in-house list, the contacts that you have, the prospects that you have, the clients that you have. And I use clients strategically. If you don't know the difference between a client and a customer, 
I probably can't help you. <laughs> By design, I want to attract people who have clients. If you have customers and you're happy with customers, well, they price shop. And, you know, a yes. gas station has customers. They don't yeah. have clients at Sunoco. But you guys and I, we have clients. These are people. That's right. The Latin term is, you know, someone who's under your protection. I learned this from Jay Abraham. <clears throat> so I was just uh, on the phone before this call with a client of mine and giving them advice on the mailing that we're going to do next week. And, um, you know, this, this really whole time clock for me. I'm always thinking about my clients. A cus yeah. You know, lawn service, you've got customers because you just do it and get out. Unless you want to take it an extra mile, and there's a lot to be said for doing that. So the idea of if you just take a, as good a care as you can of your clients, you're not really worrying about selling. Um, and I make a big use of um, case studies and testimonials. I'll get to the paper email in a minute. I'm just um, digressing here a second. If you're if you if you have one really delighted client, you can build a whole business around them, starting with a campaign, because you can take that client, interview them, and create a case study. Mm -hmm. which can be put on your website as a video. And then if you transcribe it, it becomes a letter. If you break it up, it becomes two or three blog posts and about four or five LinkedIn posts. And it, if you interview them by phone, it can be a podcast. So you can split that and slice and dice it five different ways. That's just one client testimony. Sure. If you've got six, 10, 20, then you've got a whole editorial calendar for the next year. Right. Then you're sitting on that right now. But people are, you know, and I do this too. You're always looking... The dopamine fix is to look for new, new, new clients, new, new, new prospects. as something else on Facebook and fine, but just, you know, take care of your knitting. Yeah. So if you've taken care of your prospects and you've got a good database of people that you're taking, you're tending to it and sending information out, um, then you've got the starting point for all your future uh, promotions. And you, um, Jonathan, got my printed newsletter in the mail. Sean, if you want to give me your contact information when we're done, you can get it next month. But um, this is how I keep in touch with people. I've had people on that list for 10, 12 years. Wow. What's your and cost well, on that? Just just ballpark. What's your cost on doing something like that? A couple hundred bucks a month. I mean, okay. it's yeah, less than a, a dollar a letter. Yeah. So 12 bucks a year to touch someone 12 times. And if you touch them with a letter, there's nothing to click on. You yeah. know, there's no, I don't have open tabs on a letter. I'm not going to over to ESPN.com the, the right. second I get bored. I might put the letter down fine, but it's my responsibility to keep you interested. Right. Yeah. So there's so much to be said for a, an offline direct mail nurturing program. I do that mm -hmm. for clients too. I've, it's the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. I don't think most people do the math like you just did. And I've done this for clients yeah. before. It's like, yeah, 12 bucks, 12 to 20 bucks. Even if you put a couple, you know, let's say you do some a lumpy mail once a quarter or something like yeah. that, you know, but yeah, it's one of the cheapest forms of advertising and marketing mm -hmm. out there is just to send a letter to your current list in mm -hmm. the mail. Like I said, it's, I mean, that's almost in the price range of retargeting traffic. It's just not. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. that's a great way to look. Anyone who's reluctant to do a printed newsletter, I'm mean, going to say, Hey, it's, it's offline retargeting. There you right. go. I love right. that. Trademark that. Offline. All right. Offline. <laughs> I'm going to go daddy. As soon as yeah. you targeting, retargeting offline, something there, paper retargeting. But I mean, it's, that's, that's a brilliant analogy. It really is. You know, would you pay, you know, 10 bucks a click for retargeting? Absolutely. Would you pay 10 bucks a year for 12 retargets? I don't know. I mean, uh, that's stupid. That's yeah. bad man. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great way to put it. So, um, yeah. And again, I love to touch people offline. If, touching is literal here. It's a letter. It's paper. Right. So it's tangible. It's more believable. It's provably more believable than anything you can read online. There are studies that show this, that what you see online, the dig digital stuff is less trustworthy. Yeah. There's yeah. something, there's a study too about reading, you know, like books or paper with the, yeah. with the hard edges and mm -hmm. our brain sees all that stuff differently, remembers it better at a higher rate, all Somebody kinds of stuff that doesn't happen on, on uh, yeah glass for some reason. So, yeah, so any kind of a program. So mine is designed to look like a letter. It's kind of a hybrid design, but it's two sides and one sheet of paper. Maybe if yours is handy, Jonathan, you can stick it in front of the camera. If not, no biggie. But it's a, you it's know, a piece of paper. It's not, but yeah, I remember. It's, it's, on, it's <laughs> on his nightstand. He rereads it every night. Yeah. Every night. Look, you can go the route of the professionally done newsletter. There's a great yeah. company called Newsletter Pro. There's is like an 8 or 12, 16-page letter that they'll do for you. And it, it look, it's got all kinds of other content and that's fine. Um, 
but it's a newsletter and there's some time that you're going to invest in it. Mine's one piece of paper, two sides. You're done reading it in about two, three, five minutes, but there's so always this is one for people. Bit. This is for people, you know, Kevin, like clients or just people you've been on podcasts with or like just anybody you want yeah. to keep in touch with. Yes. Anyone, their referral partners, past clients, prospective <clears throat> clients. Um, and, um, there's always one useful article, usually okay. two, and then there's some personal stuff about. So that's important, too. I learned this from Dan Kennedy. Most newsletters, in fact, all of them probably, that you get from your CPA, your insurance agent, unless they're done with from the outside help, the tendency if you do your own newsletter is to just talk about, to just talk shop. Yeah. So your CPA is going to tend to tax tips. And, that, and my reaction is I pay you money so I don't have to think about tax anything right. about it. that that's yes. your job i don't that's your want yeah. to know yeah, I don't, that's your lane not right. mine right and so people mess that up and so mine is you know i'm i make a living by saying interesting things in interesting ways and so i try to be readable on the the, the, the pro tip that i get from my industry how to make you more money people are interested mm -hmm. in that but i also have the bit about you know my personal life there's last month was uh how i'm hit, i was hitting 480 in baseball and it was a tip that directly into your in your own life i'm now hitting i finished the year like 450 and look that's, I mean, that's aaron judge numbers right there i mean <laughs> well he moved up to the 50 plus pitchers but i say that's <laughs> when the ball's coming in about this fast it's not that so now you're at the lower end of the age bracket so right but I mean, okay but the, the point is is the way i hit over 400 i didn't hit over 400 and so i started doing an in the yeah. military you call it an after action report Right. At the end of every game, I was writing down this didn't work. Who that was good. So I'm just like getting a little better every game. So, awesome. so I've got a huge list of notes on my phone. And so I said in the newsletter, look, you know, if you did this in your business at the end of every day, a few minutes, this worked today, this didn't, here's what I'll do different. You can't help but improve. Yeah. And so that's an example of a personal story that it's going to be applicable. And it doesn't have to be applicable. It could just be pictures of you and your dog or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, if you can make a personal connection with people, um, Perry Marshall, who's an ace marketer, he was saying that he did, I think he set a sales letter out and uh, he, Perry Marshall is very good at building. I love Perry form. Marshall. Yeah. He's He'll good. spend, now he, he writes, that guy, yeah. not only is he a good writer, but I mean, he's voluminous. Yeah. If you were to print his sales letters, there's nothing less than 12 pages i'm convinced you know and the, which is it's not i don't do that <laughs> I, yeah. I don't have the attention span but his letters are two three four five pages of rapport building at the beginning and he had a letter that went out and he mentioned the fact that he had uh, adopted two girls from china it might have been a different number of kids but he was an adoptive dad mm -hmm. and it was a promotion for something and the first person who called said i'm an adoptive dad too oh Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, and he bought oh. and because he made a personal connection and adoptive dad has nothing to do with the promotion but he made a personal connection and so bam sales so you that this is kind of next level stuff meta marketing mm -hmm. but um if if, if people you know it, well this is a cliche people buy from you if they know like and trust you well right the more you can be like somebody in your promotions in your marketing the more they're gonna see you as differently from the other person Right. So that's why I throw into details like I, I do Spartan races and I do the baseball. I was doing parkour last winter. Just I'm real active and I try to throw things in there that um, are interesting. So I wow. and by no small coincidence, most of my best clients are physically active people, too. Yeah. That's my business. So, so I do parkour at 57. That's cool. There, yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, it's. It, it, it's do you do a it, gym for that, or is it all outdoors? Like I do, I have my own gym. I have a backyard with monkey bars, and okay. um, I've got a uh, sandbags and all the the Spartan races. That's another podcast we can do. Yeah, I just I love Spartan <laughs> races. talk about a brand Spartan racing. It's like I would. So I mean, look, you've got a, you know you've got a brand when half the t-shirts in my closet are spartan t-shirts right here <laughs> at, i'm doing on paid advertising it's a spartan yeah hat. there's my medals right behind me right here. oh yeah yeah my medals right here spartan oh, race cool. medals um, mine are off to the side here yeah, yeah so i mean hit the trifecta so, back in 18 nice. i think i'm doing a ultra in dallas in three weeks oh cool which is gonna kick my butt but um <laughs> But so they've got geography occupied in your house and my house. They've got sure. over absolutely. There. And yep. so you know you've got a good brand when people wear all your stuff 
and mm -hmm. willing to maybe tattoo your low their logo your logo on their body and and yep. you've got you know you're taking up space in their home and it's prominently displayed it's just, mm -hmm. you know it's like one of my clients is an alabama fan and he's got stuff all over the place and so if you, yeah. if you can get to that level of connection where people are displaying your stuff bingo. <laughs> okay georgia yeah yeah you know. no he sent tell the story uh kevin you sent this guy a signed is yeah this the same one was, you send a signed football with uh, the Saber? guy who referred me my latest client which is a sizable project they're actually out of the football i ordered it and i got an email the next day we're out so i got him an autographed nick saban picture which just arrived yesterday sure yeah and it was several hundred bucks but the project cost this much and 700 bucks is yeah. here so yeah it's a no yeah that was a yeah. no-brainer and i love the guy he's no just one of my favorite people and he's referred some really nice projects to me in the past i should have done something bigger I mean, he'll get yeah. something else um, yeah. for Christmas, but you know, think about, um, the concept of a client retention. This is referral. So you should definitely reward, reward your top referral partners, but a client retention budget, we all have a client acquisition budget, which is like, you know, this big goes off the charts, it's off the screen, but our client retention budget, if we have one at all, it's probably minuscule, Yeah. but what could be more cost effective than bringing back your current clients? Yeah. Right. And so, you know, the newsletter that I mail out every month, that's part of my client retention budget. There are gift, mm -hmm. gifts that I do all the time for referrals. When someone becomes a new client, they get a welcome box for me that has about $125 worth of goodies inside. Sure. A tangible box, it arrives, welcome. Right. Um, and that's all just designed to make a, you know, <coughs> go back to tangible stuff. It's <laughs> anything you can do to be tangible with your clients is going to be to your advantage. Right. It also fits your brand because you're doing a lot of offline stuff, you know, right. it just, so they experience that feeling of getting something in the mail or on their mm -hmm. porch. And then it's like, Oh, this does feel nice. You know, whether they realize that consciously or not. Right. You know. Yeah. And so this is a good time to talk about the paper email, which Jonathan alluded. It's in yeah. my book. Paper email is simply an email that you think is good, or it's produced results in the past, print the thing and put it in an envelope and mail it. Ta-da, you're done. It's a, paper email it's direct mail for busy people i put a headline at the top in red that says paper email and i i and, and i don't think i invented it i mean i've seen it from other people but i sure. hadn't seen it before i did it so i don't know but i my car local car dealer was sending me emails on paper a few years ago i thought that's that's well done so i don't mm -hmm. know if they saw my thing but i started it out on a whim i wanted to send a thank you note to uh, seth godin about 14 years ago, I saw him speak and uh, I was going to push send on the email. I go, you know what? He's getting 100 emails today from people who saw him. I want to do something different. So I found his mailing address and I printed the email. And I think I included a post-it note or else I wrote at the top, you know, I, I, I printed this paper email because I wanted to make sure that you absolutely positively uh, didn't get caught in your spam filter. Folder, filter. I used the FedEx line. Absolutely, positively want to make sure you read this. So I sent him <laughs> the uh, thank you note. He called me from his car. That's and he awesome. said, hey, Kevin, I just wanted to thank you for the super nice note. and wanted to let you know I got it. And that was neat. So I thought, oh, that was interesting. So anything. So I regularly review my marketing for yeah. little accidents that have worked. That I su Surprises are so valuable, but you got to be looking for them. Yeah. Do those emails go, do they go regular mail? Do they go FedEx, do they? I've sent them FedEx, but just a uh, mail. And uh, a good tip is to send them in a thank you note envelope. Ditch the note or buy square envelopes on their own. But mm -hmm. a square envelope is a super valuable carrier for a letter because only good news comes in a square envelope. Hmm. If you think about mm. it. Yeah, that's a good point. It's geometry working in your favor. You don't get a summons from a <laughs> <laughs> from uh, the traffic tickets you didn't pay, you don't get a, a letter from your ex-wife's attorney. Uh, it's either an invitation or a thank you note. Sure, yeah. both are good things. So yeah, that's good. You can good engineer point. the person's mood before they've even opened the letter, and so and, I, and it stands out when you you know when you stack yeah. the stack together. It's like yeah. it sticks so up. Get yourself some credit card envelopes. First. Yeah, anything you mail in a square envelope is gonna. Uh, be opened in a better mood. So it doesn't always work for some <clears throat> some letters, but a square envelope is a simple hack. That's a great tip. 
I, I got to figure out how to refold my paper the right way. <laughs> <laughs> makes me yeah. think, you know, I th I'm mailing my next newsletter on Monday. They might go out in square envelopes. I just talked myself into it. Yes. Yeah, so share with you, share with our listeners how you send out some of your, your newsletters. Cause I, I, I got yours with the thank you. Okay. Um, but Good. you've also used the, I think you, you mentioned the tubes, right? Uh, um, yeah. My thank you. My, my monthly newsletter goes out in a plain Jane, uh, well, it's not plain. It's usually a colored number 10 envelope Okay. With yeah. no um, business logos or anything. It's just my street address and okay. a, a live first class stamp. It's usually affixed in crooked fashion. So it doesn't <laughs> look like it was done. And that's just strategic too. Um, sure. Yeah. Different. Stamp, um, is what you yeah. want. It looks, yep, exactly. It doesn't make you look sloppy. It makes it look human and not, that it exactly. wasn't metered by the post office so this is definitely a right. human did this right and there's it's called a blind address there's just a street address <laughs> so people always will say i open your newsletter first because i didn't know what was in it and these are people who've been getting my newsletter for years yeah. but um i'll use different colors of paper so this month it's red or yellow mm -hmm. but um as far as um and I'll also have it hand addressed, either uh, a machine that does it very realistically, or I'll have someone address my letters. Be again, it's the human element. Yeah. So that costs you nothing but a little time. But if you've got a sure. small list of prospects and they get a hand addressed envelope with a return address, they don't know who it's from and, a, and an obviously hand affixed stamp. That's three things that are immediately different from all the other letters that they're getting. So your letter is going to get open first. Yeah. At least with interest. Yeah. This won't be discarded. Um, so I am blanking on the question you asked, Jonathan. Where are I we? <laughs> Did you, were you asking about how I send my, oh, that tube? Have I used tubes? Yeah, the tube. Yeah. I was okay. thinking you used like a, a cylindrical oh, yeah. tube or something. Yeah, like darn it. They're not handy. Um, I saw one on your on your site. Is that the one? Yeah. So that is what I, I'm just combing. I just straightened my office up and I don't see any anywhere. It's, it's called the client cloning kit. Ah, there you go. There you go. Dude, you're, you're fast. That so, is awesome. What do you So get this is nothing more than five reports rolled up inside a tube. Mm -hmm. But when it arrives in the mail, you can't put anything on top of that. Mm -mm. So it no. goes on top of the pile. Yep. And it's actually occurred where the post office did not deliver it because it looked like an explosive device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can't be any dumber. Than it, that, it looks like yeah. a pipe bomb. There exactly. So someone, it actually happened. The post office sent it back to me saying this looks dangerous. I remember, but there was a big warning sticker. It could not be delivered. Oh, okay. I think it was right after nine 11. Yeah. Um, if, it, if I've been mailing them that long, but um, it, it just, it didn't get mailed, but yeah, so this is a, uh, it's a plastic tube. You can get it from Uline and the rubber caps, uline mm -hmm. and then uh, a nice interesting little label but that costs a couple bucks to send out and no one forgets those things and oh. you can also download it for free but i'm trying to be tangible and get something to you so this is in marketing parlance that's a lead magnet it's designed to attract prospects but um i ask for people's mailing addresses and i get them and i love to send them out and um, people open them with interest, and they um, they like them. So I've been mailing that for over a decade. So you you order those in bulk from Uline, bring yeah. those in, and then just like stick the newsletters in your. I have. Oh, that's not a newsletter. That's for uh, the client cloning. Okay, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people request that off my website, mm -hmm. and then they'll get um, regular emails, and then they go on my mailing list. So that's yeah. how I build my mailing list: is people who have requested the client cloning kit. But this is just, you know, yeah, bingo. Yep. Perfect. Dang, you're good, Sean. He's like a master at this. I mean, he just pulls it up right away. <laughs> well, he's um, a copywriter. What we do is research stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think uh, you see, you look at that grand opening. That's kind of probably where I got the germ of yep. the idea for making it look like an explosive device. But I have a really good yeah. designer. He I had love that. Ideas. And so yeah. my printer does all this. I have an assistant who does my mailing, mm -hmm. but it's cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah. For, so. for my, I mean, I'm not a cheap ticket myself. So if you hire me, <laughs> I'm more than 50 bucks, right? So I'm happy to send you this <laughs> 250 Yeah. For $3. But these are cheap, but they look, I mean, somebody gets that. It's completely different. So the value right. goes up in their mind because it's I completely. A long time ago. Yeah. I think it was Dan Sullivan who has got a really good um, and strategic coach mm -hmm. taught us about naming. Yeah. And there are so many 
ways to to come up with unique names for your service. Just, you know, free consultation. No, no, no. If you Google free consultation, there's a gazillion online. Yeah. But if you say in-home energy money saving audit or something like that, there's sure. probably one. <clears throat> right. right. So if you Google client clone client cloning kit in quotes you'll find and i'm sure sean is on this right now <laughs> if you google client cloning kit yes. last yeah. time i did it it's all me there's nobody yeah. else on planet earth who has a client cloning kit so this took a little bit of effort you know maybe yep. 10 minutes to come up with a name there you go look yeah, at all that. of those so that's, that's an ad yeah it's not a real website but i believe all of those go to me yeah so that's a unique name that's you that you you look right that. so yeah um, no for kit and cloning. Then you get into real cloning here. Yeah, I've had people find me <laughs> in some of the search terms that turn up in my. There's ad an actual. Room. There's an actual picture. Yeah, yeah yep. someone, me or someone Flicker. else. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's me with my uh, German bomb scientist outfit. <laughs> Yeah, you look like you're uh, some uh, you know CIA or FBI expert or something. Oh, like you should. This is after I shaved my goatee. My wife is like, <laughs> "You're you look seventy. That's not a good look." So this is I only look sixty there, and now I look about fifty-seven here. I'm going backwards. There's it's nothing good. like a baseball cap to de yeah. you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I wear mine. I'm bald over here, so. <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, I help clients with this all the time, coming up with a unique name for your uh, two two places in any business where you can do this is your consultation and then your lead magnet, your widget that you give away to people. Just yeah. spend a few minutes, come up with something. And the way to check is to put the, the name in, in quotes and Google it. Yeah. And Google will tell you um, if it's unique or not or how many other people are saying that. Yeah. And do you like, and I noticed yours is alliterated. Do you find you end up doing a lot of like alliterated stuff where it's, you know, the same letter at the front? Does, oh, good question. No, I never seems to that. Seems to, you see that a lot in big corporations. You see that. I know I, when I'm doing stuff, it's either an acronym or alliterated when I yeah come up with names for stuff. No, you're giving me too much credit. I hadn't thought of it like that. <laughs> I, I try to make something that's attractive and unique, obviously. And beyond yeah. that, um, I don't know what else did we, did I kick, Jonathan off somehow or did he I back went to the restroom or something. He didn't pay his monthly bill for this. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> we're on his, we're on his stream yard account. So I, I'm a co-host though. So I guess we're on the same, cool. but um, so yeah, well, I know you, uh, I know he's going to be short on time too. Um, hmm. What else do we need to know? There's back. There he is. Um, uh, the reason I, yeah, I stopped my mic. I wanted to get a, um, I grab a copy of your newsletter. So, oh, cool. So, yeah, I want to hold this up. So, it's really cool. Um, cause you put a lot of stuff in there in just a one page uh, newsletter. So, front mm -hmm. and back, um, and the title, the headline at the beginning that you, the one that you sent me, business owners who read this will end up, uh, with your money. <laughs> that's it. it. That's a good title. That's a good, that's an, that's a new take on a really fun old headline. Yeah. Um, and so how to hit, uh, 486 and why it matters. And I love the fact that you, um, you put so much in there, but one of the things that you mentioned is like you, you call out some of the people, some of the people that refer you business, you actually yeah. mentioned them in some of your that's newsletters. A good, that's that's a good like, point. yeah. Reciprocity a, right there. I mean, it is, um, that's a great uh, little tip. I just posted some on LinkedIn two hours ago about this is that it's, it shows people that referrals are customary yeah. in my mm -hmm. business and they're kind of expected They happen all the time. It's routine. Um, one of my old clients got to be one of the top all state agents in Alabama. And one of the things they would do is whenever they answered the phone, they would say, Oh, hi, Jonathan. Thank you for calling. Uh, who referred you? Yeah. And they would go and, more, more often than not, they'd say, Sean referred me. But if they mm -hmm. didn't, they would say, well, I just found you. And then the, the person answering the phone will say, well, that's okay. Almost everybody is referred to us by, you know, one of our delighted clients or and friends or family. And it's just, it happens all the time. I just thought I'd ask. And so yeah. you're planting a seed that referrals are customary and expected. And so um, I do this about every other issue is I'll just name all the people who've sent me referrals. Mm -hmm. And so that the person reading their name is happy. And the, for the other people, they go, Oh, this is, this happens quite a bit. So, you know, there's a reason for that. It works. <laughs> yeah. 
No. Was that um, the Allstate guy? Is that Bill something? He was, yeah. Yeah. We used to, I mean, even Jonathan, you probably, you might still get his stuff, but I remember when we lived in Knoxville, we were always getting his stuff. Bill Goth. Bill Goth, yes. That's yeah, right. he was a client for about three years. I wrote uh, a bunch of things for him. He was, but he was already successful before he found me, and um, he uh, took everything back in-house, and he's still using some of the stuff we came up with, but he was he's just a smart guy. He's uh, in Alabama, Florence, Alabama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're good yeah, guy. I remember getting a lot of direct Bill mail Goth, from him. So. Mm-hmm. so it's very cool. Well, um, Jonathan, now you know you're running short on time, and Kevin's been very generous with his time. No, oh, yeah. Thank what you else, Kevin? That. Do we uh, do we need to know about you, or how can people find you and kind of get a hold of you? Well, your this website is a lot of fun, up. guys. If I was going to start a podcast, I'd want to recruit <laughs> you too. So I don't know if you're up for a, a side gig or something, but I'm in. <laughs> so we have a blast. I will start a podcast called Three Guys Talking About Marketing, whatever. But this is a lot of fun. I'm seriously had a blast. Thank you for having me. The, well, uh, we started out. This is what we did. We talked every week. Kevin, I mean, we would like when Sean used to live in my town. Now he lives right. over in your neck of the woods in Austin. Um, but we used to get together on occasion and just talk shop at a casual pine or something like this. And so we said, you know, why not turn it into a podcast? So I think it works well, you know, mm-hmm. when you're talking about something you really enjoy. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, it comes natural, have, you know. We were in flow for the past hour because I didn't notice it and it's been yeah, an hour. Right. I mean, I hope we delivered. I think we, I know we delivered some value and thanks for for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, for most of my clients are doing between uh, one and $20 million in revenue. And so if that is about your ballpark, you can go to clientclillingsystems.com. There's the website and you are welcome to click on step one, which is grab a free client clilling kit. And I'll ship the thing out to you. Don't stick it in a bucket of water. It won't explode. It just looks cool. Um, and uh, I'm happy to send that to you. And my phone number and email are there as well. You can reach out and, and touch me. Now, how uh, did you get, I'm just curious real quick. How did you get that personalized? Well, uh, can you have that done through Uline? Like the, Oh, that's your... my designer came up with that label. Okay. And then right. I have, uh, I think there are five reports inside that are printed. I wrote them a couple of years ago, but they're evergreen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my printer does so that's just that. an insert. You print that out and slide it in there, right? Yeah. So you okay. the things are rolled up. So you gotcha. open the, the tube in the five report. I could say download your PDF. That's exciting. No. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Here, nope. I want you to get the goodies in the tube, right. open it. There's some in- involvement. And so, yeah, it's uh, the five reports that are printed in there. They're very cool right. things. And the paper email is one of those reports, by the way, if you're interested at all. I'll show What's you that so exactly. S- What's also smart about that is that now you have their physical address. You can put them on your, your nurture sure. sequence for your 12 newsletters mm-hmm. because you have their address. You know, a lot of people who they'll get an email address, which is so easy to unsubscribe from after you get right. the report. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the right. mailing, like, you know, you could, you could technically write in and be on a new do not mail list, but that's a lot of work for most people. And most people don't even know you can do it. And it's not annoying to get something once a month. No. And you know, if, if it's never happened, but if someone says never mail me again, I'll take you off the list. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it, it you is get, you rarely get those. <laughs> that's the, it's the opposite of email. You know. Yeah, I've, I've I've told clients like you got to figure out a way to get full physical addresses sooner so that you can start going mm-hmm. offline. Yeah, that's a true yeah. competitive advantage. If you can, plus it makes your business worth more. If you ever wanted to sell it or anything like that, yeah. it's, it's worth more. Yeah, email is just uh, email is going the way of print. It's not going to disappear, but it's just getting harder and harder. Yeah. Sure. Right, but yeah, so Kevin, people are invited to go to clientclillingsystems.com, request a free client cloning kit if you're you think your business is a suitable uh, match, or you just want to learn more and uh, be happy to ship that out. I just right. want to get one of those pipe bombs in the mail and I'll be <laughs> signing up. You said, you said uh, the B word twice. We're going to get blacklisted on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> going to get demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks so much. We're going to be posting links uh, on this episode so people, our, our listeners, can learn more. And thank uh, we thank you for your time today. Hope you have a great weekend. We uh, we've really really enjoyed it. Love talking shop here, guys. and stuff Thank like you. this. If you want to do this again, I'm all up for it. And I really had a good time. Thanks very much for having me. You bet. Hey, have a great weekend. Take you care. Too. Yep. You bet. Bye bye. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. All 
All right. Well, do we, uh, I know you you're short on time. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, okay. I can go a few more minutes, but, uh, that's good stuff on the U line. So, you know, some good takeaways like that. Do you, you know, doing something different in terms of, uh, you know, delivering how you deliver your stuff is so important Yep. nowadays. You know, I would go with one of these U line, uh, cylindrical tubes over an envelope any day, you know? Yeah. They industry. have some pretty cool, um, envelopes as well. They have some like really cool, like metallic looking, um, bubble wrap type mm -hmm. envelopes. Uh, one of my friends back there in Knoxville, we used to get those for him. Mm -hmm. He, he does the, uh, school fundraising stuff. So when he prospects schools, a lot of times he has to leave stuff in like the principal's, you know, box at the school. Right. right. So we started putting them in those kind of envelopes and sure enough, his, his, uh, you know, response rate went up when he called back. It's like, yeah, wow. I left you a big gold, you know, bubble wrap <laughs> mailer. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's all it is. It's just like remembering people remembering different, something yeah. different, something instead completely of, different instead of a number 10 envelope that you get. 20 of a day from credit card offers and everything else, you know? Yeah. I love like that. that. Only good news comes in a square envelope. You know, yeah, that's, that's true. You know, you don't think about that. That's a tweetable right there. You tweet that. <laughs> that's good stuff. Well, yeah. I want to mention, um, and we'll get into this next week. You know, you came back from a big event at, yeah. um, uh, Hunnel, sure. uh, yeah, funnel hacking. I, I noticed your shirt there. That's yeah. awesome. Part uh, of the cult now. <laughs> <laughs> so how is the uh, as an overview because we'll just kind of touch on the the highlights what big turnout i mean what was your uh, what was your five thousand five thousand people wow. okay so they yeah. sold out huge uh it was orlando mm -hmm. marriott world center um so it was all right there in, in one hotel and huge ballroom First thing I, I recognize, you know, we've talked a lot about experiences on this show and yeah, yeah. how that's kind of the, you know, a new way to create fans. And, and mm -hmm. that's really the point. They don't really make any money on this event. Um, right. I heard Russell say on a video that was pretty public. So I don't think he mind sharing it, but yeah, that the event cost them $5 million to produce. Wow. And which their tickets were a thousand bucks a piece and there's 5,000 people. So they probably broke even sure. had a couple offers that I'm sure they made some good money on. Sure. But really it's a retention play, right? If you can get right. people there excited, super fans, all that kind of right. stuff. Right. But as soon as you walk in, so this is a huge, you know, convention center, like hotel, like a huge ballrooms and stuff. And there's this long walkway going mm -hmm. down to where the ballroom was, where the stage and everything was. And on this, they had the floor decal, just huge decal on the floor with all the two comma club winners, which is anybody that's put a million dollars through their click foot, click funnels account. Yeah. Um, you know, a million dollars in revenue. Right. So it's all the people. So you see these just, you know, 2000 names of people who have hit the two comma club award. Yeah. Which is just like, wow, that's cool. So like all these mm -hmm. people, so it's already building your belief, just walking down there. Sure. The signage they had was, you know, four stories high. Cause it's a huge building. Mm -hmm. Just first class, as far as like just the graphic design. Mm -hmm. So when you registered that first night, you were like, wow. Yeah. This is like legit. Like this is a big thing. And then you get yeah. into the stage so they keep the doors closed. You can't just like wander in and sure pick your seat. It's general admission seating. So they have everybody. There's three different entrances or two entrances mm -hmm. and people would line up like 30 minutes before and they're standing at the door just waiting to get in like a concert. As soon as they open the door, people are sprinting to get the front row seats. Wow. And this is a huge ballroom. So people are just like sprinting down, trying to get sure. the best seats and the lights and the laser show. And just, you know, if you look on my Facebook page or my Instagram, you'll see um, some posts from it, but just the stage <laughs> had to be 50 yards wide. Like wow. every speaker commented on how big the stage was. Cause they were, yeah. you know, they're trying to be polite and like walk the stage to get both sides of the crowd. Sure. And, uh, they're like, wow, this is a big stage. It's like just about every speaker was like, yeah. Wow. It's a big stage fog machine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, graphics, sure. Music, DJ thumping. So the experience yeah. was very, Oh yeah. 
like cool. And and one speaker made a good point. He's like, you guys realize this is a software company. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is not like a sales organization necessarily, but it is. But right. you know, it's like as it at its core, it's a software company. It's a SaaS right. company. Right. But you know, they're um, but yeah, I think the big thing, there were a few like really good uh, tactical takeaways, which we can get into next week a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what I thought was interesting is, is most of the speakers talked more about mindset than they mm -hmm. did about tactics. Ah, okay. Because if you don't have the mindset to do the business and do the work and do all the different things that need to be done to build the funnels, to do all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. the tactics don't matter that much. Yeah. Um, so there was a, there was interesting how there was kind of a common thread of, of, just that mindset and belief and all those kind of things. But there was every, you know, Russell said several times throughout the thing, like every piece of the whole event was, was coordinated and, and mm -hmm. his pitch that he did, um, for their coaching program, like all the different things, everything was lined up in a very specific order. Speakers sure. were in a specific order. Like it was carefully planned, you know, t-shirts they gave out books they mm -hmm. gave out. Right. So yeah. It was, a it was a really well done, well orchestrated event. Um, went yeah, from like sounds like nine in the morning till nine at night. Um, you were for, tapped after, yeah, the, like by the day, last day, day. Two, yeah, day two, I was already exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> then I kind of got got a second wind, I got a good night's sleep, got a second wind for Saturday or Friday and Saturday. Yeah, but yeah, the first just you know, fire hydrant coming at you, which is speaker. Sure. Cause they only, their speakers are on for like 25 minutes and they just run through. There's no breaks. There's a lunch break and a dinner break, but there's no like, you know, every 90 minutes a break type thing. It's just like speaker at speaker. Crazy. Wow. So you can, you can get up and leave and obviously all that stuff. Um, so there's a lot yeah. of people in and out, but most people, majority of the people stayed. And then there was a lot of areas where people were just kind of networking outside mm -hmm. they had a swag store right outside the, the cool. main ballroom where you could buy yeah. t-shirts and sure all those kinds of things. So yeah, just, just a well done event. And we'll next week, uh, I ordered talk about a cool business. There's a guy you, you may have heard of him, but he goes around all these big events, you know, this traffic and conversion, mm -hmm. you know, all these big events, marketing events, and he takes notes and he's got the, the agreement of the, whoever's doing the event. He's mm -hmm. their official note taker. And then he sells the notes to whoever's oh, in wow. attendance. Wow. So for 37 bucks, I bought the notes from this guy. Right. Um, and they're delivered next week, uh, I think next Wednesday, okay. which is really nice because I didn't have to like, I could take notes more on like what I was thinking instead of what the speaker was saying. Sure. Because I knew I was going to get the notes later. Yeah. So um, I thought that's a really cool service. That's you great. Just, you don't have to be, be so like, focused on taking notes that you can really just watch the speaker and listen right, right. and then get, know you can go back and review later. So cool business. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. It was a good event. Glad I went, met a couple, you know, potential clients, met some old clients mm -hmm. that I yeah. had not seen in a while. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's even, I some saw good. some of the, uh, some of the speakers. I mean, there was what, uh, Brendan Bouchard, Brendan Bouchard, Ed Milet, uh, Marie Forleo. Yeah some of the big names, um, Garrett White was there. Yep. Um, yep. Jenna Kuchar, mm -hmm. um, Perry Belcher. Oh, wow. Was there are some of these guys like, like <clears throat> I know, I mean, you've heard and I've been to their events, but it's like, you know, either you've been out of their, uh, you know, out of their pinball machine for a while yeah. <laughs> where they, you know, yeah, off their list for a while where you haven't heard from them or whatever, but it's like, it's, it was cool. Cause I saw some of the stuff you posted. Yeah. But, Perry like Belcher. Seeing them. Yeah. We'll definitely, he gave a little bit more tactics. So we'll dive into yeah. some of that. And then Russell, a couple of talks, he gave some tactics that, yeah. Uh, one was how he increased, um, once they bought GKIC and the newsletter right. business, how they got a 360% increase the first couple months. Wow. And I'll also next week. So I'll tease this for you too. Uh, we'll share. They kind of gave away the numbers of where that, that business was mm -hmm. when they bought it and where it is now, as far as number of wow. subscribers. And I was shocked wow. at the number. Like how, how low it was to how high they brought it. 
Yeah. 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 I can imagine. Yeah. So, um, it's interesting how you can take a brand like that and just revive it with a few little tweaks mm -hmm. and some new, you know, fresh energy and sure. New list, you know, no, I can, I can totally believe that as much as I love Dan Kennedy. Yeah. You know, I could see that, you know, them buying it. I mean, you know, credit Especially to them. with all the, with the turmoil they've had over the last 10 years. Sure. With that, sure. With that publication, it's gone through oh, five yeah. or six different people. So yeah, I think it's in the right them. hands. They now. bought, they bought low. <laughs> that's yeah. the, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, that's, that's the key. You buy low and, and, uh, you know, at, that was perfect opportunity for them to come in for sure. Yeah. yeah. So. And I did miss, um, they did a day with Dan Kennedy before and I wasn't yeah. able to get in. Hopefully I'll get the notes on that as well. Um, yeah. so we'll cover that next week. So yeah, we'll, okay. we'll do a deep dive into funnel hacking live next week. Cool. A lot of like good one liners and things like that from, yeah from the different guests and um yeah it was it was good like it's good. it's amazing the number of people out there mm -hmm. the line of of people getting two comma club awards was just i mean it took them yeah. like two hours to go through and give out all the awards like a graduation just right you know it's like wow, wow. man there's a lot of people out there doing <laughs> and i don't obviously i don't know what their profit margins were yeah um but most of them are in information marketing or supplements or Sure. So probably pretty decent. That's great. I mean, figure even if it was only 20%, 25%, I mean, that's a, yeah. you know, quarter million dollar, you know, net business. It's not Absolutely. bad. So, yeah, okay, we'll cool. talk about that. Um, next. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting into that next week. Um, I guess we'll do a quick review of our. Uh, yeah. Let's do the beers now that I'm done with mine. <laughs> Um, so mine is, I'll just jump in. So mine is from a company called the brewing project, mm -hmm. um, which is a new brand for me. I'd not tried these there. Uh, it was not on their site as far as the can, but it's called slurp. So it's literally like S S S L U R P P P. Mm -hmm. It's an Imperial milk stout. Okay. So it's an Imperial milk stout. <laughs> oh man. Look at that. With sh milk, sugar, raspberry, and cocoa nibs. 7.43% okay. alcohol. Um, have you ever had like a piece of like a candy bar that has like a chocolate candy bar that has the raspberry filling? In the oh, yeah. Of it? Yeah. That's for exactly sure. what this tasted like. Oh, okay. So it was really, it was, it was nice it little combination. Kinda, sweet. It had a little bit of sweet and, and sour, a little bit yeah. of that raspberry sour in it as well, but not like a sour beer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it had the stout background to it, you know? Sure. So I yeah. thought it was actually very, very good. Um, I don't know what else was in it, but like the bottom of my glass has got like <laughs> chunks. Oh there's, man. Like, that's some, like some, uh, yeah, there's some know. solids down there, man. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I guess I should have. So you're calling the, we say in the chemical industry, yeah, some solids. That yeah, a little down sludge there the down there. I'm not yeah. sure if that's the cocoa nibs or what that is. But anyway, I thought it was really good. So before I give my rage, I'll let you talk about what you've got. Okay. I've got a, uh, today I brought in, because I, I love the guys at Cigar City. For whatever reason, just about everything I've ever had from them is super yeah. good. Uh, today I had a good gourd. Good gourd. Uh, good gourd. Um, because it is... It is that time of year. I know we pushed it off. Yeah. But it is pumpkin time. I, I will is, have pumpkin next week for sure. It is Oktoberfest. It is pumpkin time. It is pumpkin yes. ale season. So we are going to embrace uh, pumpkin season and pumpkin ale and all of that stuff for the next month. Yes. This is actually really good. 8.8%. .8%, and uh, I got to say, I'm going to give this one a solid... I'm going to give this in a four or five because I really enjoyed it. I actually drank two uh, wow. during Kevin's time on our show. Nice. And uh, it says liquid uh, monument to the gold of the pumpkin, the most notable of all gourds, this imperial, and it is an imperial pumpkin ale. So that may have something to do with it. Uh, yeah. Brewed with cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, vanilla uh, to emulate the flavors of decadent, uh, pecan pumpkin pie. So Ooh, nice. And I like me some pumpkin pie during Thanksgiving, but also because we're like, and we've been unseasonably cool this time of year. 
or, you know, this time, like late September, typically we don't get this chilly, but man, yeah. it's been chilly around here. So it makes you feel like it's November this past week with the, uh, you know, with the change in temperatures. Uh, I love it, man. It's good. Yeah. Four, eight. I mean, four, five, I'm sorry. Four, five, not four, eight. Yeah. I'm going to get mine the same four five. Um, okay. the number I had Sweet. in mind. So yeah, it was good. Um, uh, it was different. It had that little bit of sweet and sour of the raspberry yeah. but just just right not not too much not too little um i am freaking out about the chunks in the bottom but other <laughs> solid the solids the at solids. the bottom those uh, are um yeah you want to take those down man those those are those are beneficial to you i'm sure it's yeah i'm sure <laughs> get right on that there's there's some nutrition there i'm sure i'm, I'm sure I'm positive <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll i'll let you know next week so. all right well looking forward to next episode where we will be getting into more detail from uh sean's experience at, at uh, funnel hacking 2020 funnel hacking live 2022 i'm yes excited to go over some of your notes and uh, we'll be doing that on our next episode to all of our listeners. You can find us over at persuasion by the pint.com. You can find us on all of your podcast platforms, Stitcher radio, iHeart, Spotify, you name it, all of the above. Just do a quick search for persuasion by the pint and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Sean, it's been fun. Been fun. See ya. <laughs>